Hey, just before I open up for questions, I just wanted to send my condolences to Greg Knapp's family. I, uh, I never knew Greg, Greg personally, never worked with him, but he had a huge impact on this building, and he had a huge impact on a lot of relationships with uh, players and coaches and staff around here. So I just want to send my condolences to his family, and the league will miss him. Uh, with that, I'll open this up for questions. Yeah, Coach, how the first practice go? I know y'all got rooms where, where you start sure. out a certain way, so just kind of take us through that and where, where we headed here in the first week of training camp. Yeah, so we go back to the you know the basics and the installs, and again, we're just building them up, right? We, you, the rules are as you, as you get acclimatized to the, to the practices, we're building up reps, we're building up obviously how many uh, yards we're, we're running these guys, so there's a purpose to everything we're doing, but made progress. Uh, you know, we got a ways to go. In a lot of areas, but good first step. And uh, so, um, uh, you know, fans want to know when the first padded practice. We'll get all excited about Yeah, that. me too. Uh, that'll be Tuesday. Thanks. Hometown. Coach, are there some things you wanted to get uh, communicated that were crystal clear that would be acceptable or unacceptable today? Or those things that you sure. Absolutely. It's just the style and the way we practice. I mean, we don't think we're, we're special or any better than anybody, but there's a certain way we want to operate, the way that when we go and we're, we're in our full speed periods, there's a certain style that we want to play with. And um, so that's what we're on them about. And a lot of it, you got to get in condition. You know, no matter how, how much you run, it's, it's always first day you're doing all these football movements. There's nothing that quite prepares for it other than practice and getting through these first four days. Michael. Obviously, the loss made a vaccination rate. Uh, y'all five people on the sure. list right now. Where are you feeling, at least for your players, as far as comfortable with what they've done and, and maybe some of the guys not in comfort? Yeah, so yeah, we feel really good. Uh, we've got a very high uh, vaccination rate. Um, obviously, when you put guys on the COVID IR, it could be for a couple of different things. You'll see some guys back sooner than, than others. Um, and we're different spots too with the team. There's, there's, we've got a, a big portion that's fully vaccinated. We've got guys that are waiting after their second shot. We've got a couple that are in between and we only have a handful that haven't gotten it yet. So uh, we feel really good where we're at, uh, you know, Jake and his staff and we just made it available. Told them what the facts are, didn't try to pander. Go speak to the medical uh, professionals and make your own choice. So we feel pretty good about where we're at. Calvin Ridley obviously, you know, had that surgery. Sure. He was out there a bit today. Are you where do you feel like he is? If you feel like he's at this point, we'll go. Or he's still kind of holding back. We'll bring him along. He's um, it's good to see him out there, and so he obviously didn't go on PUP, and he's out there working, and we're, we got to build him up. Tori, um, any information here that you give us on Caleb Carey and sure. when he's expected back? Sure. So uh, we put three guys on on PUP. So just uh, Gono, you won't see him in camp. Um, you know, we'll follow up with him. Obviously, we wouldn't have put him on PUP if we didn't think he had a chance to come back. He, uh, you know, we'll, he'll get evaluated further here soon, and we'll, we'll know more then. But uh, there's a chance, and that's why you put somebody like that on PUP. Sonat, same thing. You won't see Sonat in camp. Um, so he, he's recovering from an, an upper body injury. So those two guys. Now with Caleb, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but I would think it'd be sooner rather than later. We're just being smart here. And Caleb knows we got high expectations for Caleb to come in there and compete as the right tackle. And uh, it's been crystal clear, and he, he's in a good frame of mind. George, you've uh, been through your first uh, OTA's first main campus. Was today special? Did you have butterflies? Was it uh, anything more to today than you know, uh, uh, expected? Your mind, at least everybody's different, right? So my mind was working. I obviously, I, I try to get some sleep last night. I, you know, you're restless, you're excited. It's like the first day of school. Uh, but once once that horn goes and, and Boygs and Kenny start screaming, we're on. And I just, in my mind, I'm coaching, trying to make sure, you know, I'm trying to touch every part of the team and be there and, and, and do my job to coach the foot, football team. So it was fun. It's fun to be out there. Great. You talked about, um, uh, you know, having to prove himself to the new coaching staff, the new uh, you know, staff members. You know, what can a guy like Brady, a two-time pro bowler, uh, prove in this training camp? Well, I mean, it's... Look, you know, Grady's had a good career up to this point, and like all guys that are highly competitive, and Grady's and the way he works, he's trying to get better. You can improve every year. Uh, you know, sometimes early in your career, you may have more of a physical jump than others, but mentally, you can never stop growing and improving. And uh, you know, he's he's one of our leaders, and, and I enjoy working with him. Jeff, on your left, as you're as you're trying to get your messaging and your vibe up from, from day one, 
I'm just curious as a new head coach, do you do you turn the screws pretty hard at the beginning and then maybe back off as people accept it or just yeah, just been direct and honest from the whole time since we've had them in the spring. You know, you build them up and the way that the rules were in the spring, and then now you're out here and you're, you're getting into the full speed reps. Uh, they know what the expectation is when, when we talk. You know, have a team meeting every day. And then out here, a lot of it is. It's pushing them and trying to get them to understand how we want to practice. And it's new. Yeah. And then a quick follow-up. I've talked to a lot of new head coaches before where they used to be coordinators and they came in. And sometimes they don't really know where to go on the field because they're not family in position. You're kind of halfway in between because you're still running. Sure. And so I'm wondering, are you trying to pay attention and wander the field and check in on the group? Yeah, I am. I'm trying to be everywhere. That's what I said. You just don't want anybody to see you as the only, you're the only off, you're an offensive coach. I'm the head coach. Uh, you know, I'm in other meetings. You come out here. Uh, you know, there's a lot we meet on. We talk about in the in the building here, and then you got to let you got to hire a good staff and let them coach. So I don't feel like I need to micromanage. Dave Ragone does a good job of, of logistics and coordinating the offense and those coaches do a nice job. So I like to just be present and move around. So I got a pulse on the whole team. Allison? I know it's just day one of camp, but how would you define a successful training camp as a first year coach? Really, it's can we improve? Are we better, you know, going into September 12th than we are today? And there's going to be growing pains along the way, and that's every year, whether it's year one or, you know, you hopefully get to year 10. And so you, just, you need that, you need that's the team to improve. And so we're better going into September 12th. It's as simple as that. And what's been the biggest difference for you? I know you've had many camps already, but as a head coach, kind of off the Jeff's question from a coordinator, just being out there today. Well, you know, at times when you get mad at the, the offense for something, and then you run around, you can congratulate the defense. And uh, so at least that, that, that's a little plus, I guess. Maria? You've touched on this a little bit, but what was kind of the precedent and tone that you were hoping to set today that you hope carries through all of training camp? Really, it's just the style, the way we want to practice. We want guys, we, we got to be in good shape. We got to build their legs up. Um, yeah, it's really it's as simple as that. The, the way that effort going to the football, there's nothing special about it, but setting the tone that way. Michael? Yeah, I want to go back to what you were talking about before. How do you actually mentally balance the head coach versus the offensive coordinator piece of that? during practice? Is that something you had to like mentally wreck yourself on? Absolutely. Or? Yeah, and then the spring helps. And then I've, my familiarity with, with Dave and Dean, uh, that also helps. So, yeah, you do. You got to go through it. And obviously, some of it's trial and error when you're going and like getting reps. We ask the players to get reps. Coaches need reps too. You need reps calling it, getting used to it again. Uh, yes. And the, the thing is, trust and, and hire a good staff. And, and I feel very comfortable with our staff. Back right. But. Okay. Follow up. Sure, you follow up. Yeah, I just was curious, so I'm like, like I was asking about mentally. Like, do you mentally sit there like a week ago or three weeks ago and say, okay, I need to be here next year, years after? Like, are you actually going through all that in your head to make sure you're? Yeah, trying same to the way you do when you you structure a practice. You know, you map it out. All right, no, you know, you know what's going on and what everybody's doing at that time, and you know, try to prepare. And then sometimes it's improv. You know, you may see something you want to fix over here, so. Just on the fly. Coach, my football question, real quick. Just everything going on, heat everywhere, Olympics, got, you know, Pat and out here. What is your message to the team about hey, keeping yourself safe or, or you sure. building that stuff? How yeah. Is that? It's, it's, it's huge. You know, the, the league does a good job. You know, before you get, there's a lot of administrative meetings you have with the players in the league and the, and the PA do a nice job of the messaging. And then we got to implement that every day. And we do. We try to educate our players. You build in hydration breaks. I mean, that's where we've evolved. Come a long way since days where they wouldn't give you water. So, trying to be smarter. All right. All right. Arthur, you're looking for uh, obviously leadership on this football team. What are your impressions of your leaders that uh, return to training camp? Well, I mean, we'll see kind of who emerges. You know, uh, obviously we have high expectations for Matt and Grady, guys that've been through it, guys that are work, um, and have the right mindset. And that was obvious from day one. And then you got to prove it every year. And that, that's the thing about Matt Ryan, or Grady Jarrett. They're out here to prove it. It's great. Well, you know, one day you sit back, you look at it. And those guys have had good careers, but they want to be, they want to be coached. They want to get better. And there'll be guys that, that emerge, that are real leaders, not somebody that you just put a little seal on their uh, chest to appease people. So. Come down in the back. Day one could be anxious for a lot of players, but rookies in, in particular. What did you think about Kyle Pitts and some of the young guys? How they were able to get focused and get the work in that you wanted them to get? I was just happy that most of them got through it, to be honest. 
Some of them looked like they were they were going to fall out. Miles, uh, coach, you, you briefly touched on it earlier, but uh, when we were talking to Grady, you said uh, one of the biggest differences is just the tempo from the last coaching staff to this coaching staff. What kind of tempo is that that, that he's talking about? Just sort of that into. So. You no, know, he could speak better on it than I can. I, I wasn't here, and there's, like I said, when I got this job, there've been good coaches here, been good players. All I know is the way that we want to do things, and guys I learned from, and and pick the best what, what you truly believe in. And they know that and they know the expectations. And then it's our, it's my job to make sure from the top down that we push them and, and enforce it and go, follow through with what you say. Anything else? Jeff? Following that up, in any preseason camp you've been a part of, whether it's a player or a coach, is there one thing you think that you took from a certain guy or something in a camp in terms of whether it's tone, messaging, agenda? Yeah, so I, I, like, I've been fortunate. I've said, I think I've said many times, like I, I've done this forever, but I've been around some really, really good coaches in this game. And, uh, you know, I don't bore you and mention them all, but you pick and choose. Um, obviously, you know, the most current, you know, being around Mike Vrabel, there's a lot of things, the way he does things that, that I believe in, that I've tried to implement him, and that's it's a huge credit to him. But there's a lot of guys from, from Joe Gibbs and Mike Malarkey uh, that I owe a lot to, so. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, Coach uh, Fowler being, uh, I don't know how long he has, I don't know, the, you know what, how many tests he's got to pass and all that, but uh, how much time is he expecting him to miss? And, uh, you know, I've been upset that was that for him to be out for him. Well, we'll have to assess when he gets back. Um, but Dante, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's like an injury. So, uh, you know, you hope he's healthy. And then when he gets back, we got to assess him and, same thing. He's got to go out there and earn a role, and he knows that. I'm just curious, can you give us a little glimpse of what your day looks like now that practice is officially done off the field? Like, what do you go through and do now? It depends what bass he's got on the, on the docket for me here. And then uh, so I can go in there and watch the film, talk to the coordinators. Uh, then we'll have a special teams meeting, and then I'll we'll have a team meeting. We'll break. We'll have O&D. we have a walkthrough at night, and then follow up with some more meetings. But it's pretty good. I will see what he, if he can clear my calendar or not.